I'm here as a journalist of Italian Marie Claire. I'm here as a teacher of Dosmos Domus Academy, which is uh, one of the most important schools in the, in the world about fashion. But I'm here, above all, as a watcher. And uh, this, this speech, but it's not a speech, it's just a conversation, I hope, with you, is about why, according to my opinion, and okay, my opinion may be not so important, but it's 25 years that I write about fashion. Uh, why in this moment the Dubai district fashion could reach, unfortunately maybe for us, we are Italians, a very main character on the fashion scene, international scene. Why? Because uh, we realized that in the last 20 years, in the last 10 years above all, a lot of Italian brands and international brands used to come back to the, to the craftsmanship. This, is very, this could be very strange. This was very strange for us because uh, some, I remember, I'm, so, I'm very old, so I remember that in the 80s, uh, uh, I don't know, Mr. Giorgio Mani and uh, Mr. Gianni Versace and Mr. Mr. Gianfranco Ferre has to have to assure to all the world that they could make the same products in every part of the world. But in the 90s, something changed, and this something that changed was the web. And so uh, I remember when I, I'm a very close friend of uh, Mr. Tom Ford. I remember was, uh, when Tom Ford said to me that he was so proud to have the same windows all over the world in the same period, the same dresses, the same bags, the same accessories in all over the Gucci boutiques all over the world. How come did it, we are so changed? Uh, come to see some example. I, I will bring some example. This is the Gucci show for this winter and Gucci you know, it's trained by, uh, Gucci is directed by a very nice and intelligent woman called Frida Giannini, his name is Frida Giannini, was based on the valorization of Italian materials, of Italian handmade, of Italian uh, clothes, in the Italian taste, but at the same time, the problem for the big brands is to use materials, and taste and culture link it to the, our territory, but at the same time, they have to speak an international language. And I, fi I find that she was able to do that, because all the, all, all the velvet you can see well, were, were done on Italian, old Italian looms. And uh, the most uh, new thing is that, can we go with the two, folder two? At the same time, we saw these beautiful clothes. They made, because fashion is communication too, I'm a writer, I'm a journalist, and they made two different kinds of communication, the products. One was this. Folder two, please. Uh, it's about the, a new thing, a new but old. This is the concept of heritage. So, at the same time, we have a very contemporary fashion, but at the same time, we have like an old fashion way of doing things. Because in the luxury fields now, what is much more important? What do you acquire with your money? You acquire just something that is, that's very expensive? No. You want something that is exclusive, that is original, that is authentic and you acquire the time it took to make this beautiful loafer Gucci. And Gucci has always made it, but it's the first time in the, the history of the, of, of the label that they show in the shop. In the, in, the Milan, in the Milan boutique of Gucci, you can find a huge screen, so it is this, this clash, but it's a beautiful clash between technology and Craft, craftsmanship of the Renaissance time, in which you can see how the shoemakers do this kind of, uh, do this kind of products. Uh, there is the second one about the bags. So, 
So, um, okay. Someone could, could, could ask me why now? Why it's, it's happening now? According to me, for three reasons. You know, uh, in the luxury field, as I said, maybe the customers. Yesterday, I was so agree with Mrs. Rosa when, when she said about the conservator, the, to conserve, to conserve the, our culture. So the, the luxury consumers now want something original. They want something with written made in Italy, but it's done in Italy. So they need culture, and now we face a new generation of consumers who are cultured. And at the same time, they want to know more and more what is the craftsmanship behind every single object, because in this way, they can justify the, the, the highest prices. And at the same time, it's very important to avoid the competitive uh, name of the low-cost low, low cost chains, because uh, it's much more difficult to counterfeit, to make a fake of this Gucci bag, of the, the beautiful Gucci dresses, uh, because it's, it's much more difficult to imitate them. But at the same time, I think that fashion, it's about emotion too. So we said that fashion is merchandise, fashion is marketing, fashion is business, but fashion now is much more about emotion, it's much more about uh, feelings, it's much more about what you acquire. And so you can acquire a little pieces of Italy after you saw how many people, how long it, ta it takes to do this kind of bags, how long uh, how, how long it takes to project this. So craftsmanship has become suddenly something very fresh and very new. Uh, we can we'll go with the other folders. And uh, the difference with the 80s, uh, that in the 80s we have to, we had, we have to assure to, to the world that uh, we can speak a universal language. The Italians can speak universal language. I don't know if some one of you remember that in the 80s it was a movie called American Gigolo, who was, uh, who was like, uh, I don't know, a, a big, a big, huge hymn to Mr. Giorgio Armani. But now, uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's much more important to know uh, small realities that can assure you the authenticity, the, origi the originality, and above all, some desire. I, I, I relate lots of uh, uh, something that's not, uh, you cannot touch, but you can take a little piece of Italy, a little piece of France, in the case of Chanel. I don't know if you know that uh, when you go in Paris, it's possible to make a trip to the Chanel and Hermès factories to see how workers, how workers work. So it's much more important for the consumers to, to stay close to the things and to understand the real value of things. You can see this is the, uh, you know, the classical bamboo bag, but maybe all of us, we don't know how they did it, how they make it. And it's very important because now the big brands are using this schizophrenic language, very strange language. Uh, on one side, they speak to, to the world, to the planet, to the hurt. On the other side, they speak uh, about, um, in relation with a, a little a country like Tuscany. Tuscany is very well known in Italy for leather, uh, for leather and for, for the competence and from the skills to, to work with either. Because at the same time of this, we can go with the other folders. I went to London two months ago, three months ago, and always Gucci made this big marketing but charity operation that was really universal. Yep, this. Uh, they sponsored, they invented, Miss, Mrs. Frida Giannini invented this new 
manifestation to help women in the world called Chime for Change. So we have an advertising related to a very small country like Tuscany to understand the value of the object. At the same time, in the same period, we have an event big like that and all the guests were dressed Gucci, obviously. <laughs> and they, the, they gathered one billion of viewers in the, in the world and the, the, they took off four millions of euro. This is Madonna, or what remains of Madonna. Uh, and so it's very interesting that this kind of communication, because uh, yesterday uh, we were talking with some guests that fashion is marketing and the new marketing is about, it's much more about emotion, it's about the desire. Because in the Western world, our closets are full of clothes. So why do we have another product? Because they suggest, look, look at the people. There was with so many people. It, it was there. It was, they were crazy. It was wonderful. It was a real planetary phenomenon. Uh, I told you that there is another problem. That is the competition with low cost and very massive production. And uh, I, I don't know if you remember that in the 90s, lots of big Italian brands have the, these so-called second lines, and now they have no second lines anymore. Why? Because we have H&M, we have Zara. So we, have not, we cannot compete with them because it's possible for us, and uh, I think it's not bad. It's, uh, Zara is not the devil, H&M is not, is, is not uh, something, very, so something bad, but I think that for, for the young people who has no, not so much money, it's possible to be in fashion. So, if you want something luxury, luxury has to have inside, in itself, something more than a beautiful shape of good materials. And this is just one story, but we have another story about uh, an Italian brand. Can we, can we go with the, with, the, with the other folder? That I love so much, because I think that uh, the history of Ferragamo, it's very representative of this phenomenon. Uh, you know that Ferragamo is with Gucci, this, uh, they are the, the most important shoemaker, they, they were born like shoemaker in Florence. And you see that the, the, the advertising is very clean, that could be, and that could be shoot, shot, I don't know, where in the USA or in Europe. It's not so important because maybe, maybe you see these images in the airport, so they have to speak to a global world. This is the collection of, for next winter this winter for the Italians. <laughs> and when uh, the designer of Ferragamo is a young man, is a f uh, he's 41, his name is Massimiliano Giornetti, and he told me I have to speak with our clients, with our customers all over the world, but uh, can we see the other folders, please? But at the same time, we have to educate them to recognize what is this is the big the big word of today what is quality even because we have to face a new generation of customers and a new and a new ge ge geography of customers because uh, now we have to sell now we sell to chinese to russians thanks to the arabian people and but we live at the same time in a much more connected world. Uh, we all, all of us have Facebook, all of us have uh, fashion blogs, all of us have Twitter, uh, and all of us have Instagram. And so there is another problem we have, to, we have to resolve. It's a problem of identity, of DNA. That's the reason why I'm, I'm, I feel very optimistic about the Dubai fashion district future. This is the re-edition of an old model 
of Ferragamo. It's one of the most important models. It costs lots of money, called the Tramezza. Tramezza, it's the name of the soul inside the shoes that assure you resistance that can be, uh, that can be lasting for, long, for a long time. So there is another value, durability. And it's very important for, for, for Ferragamo to show an advertising like that, very universal, very, uh, very common, that someone that can attract someone at the same time they communicate, showing the tramezza, the tramezza process to make this. And it's entirely handmade. And there is another reason for me, there is an ethical reason. You know that now the world is much more careful to the planet, to the earth, and could be a paradox, but maybe this kind of luxury could be an help for the cause of the earth, because it's not try and throw out fashion, it's not fast fashion. It's the, these things are made to last, to last in time, to last in the time. So this is quality, this is Italian craftsmanship, and this is, uh, this, and this is another, another value. They can last, in the, they, they, they can last. So you have not to throw them after six months, okay, if you want it. But, uh, but the, 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 the reason why they were, they were built, they were, they were designed, is to last, and maybe that can relate with this kind of a subject about this, uh, about this kind of exigence we have to care about Earth, about the destiny of our planet. And um, as a teacher, I'm looking at my students, and uh, I'm realizing that even the youngest amongst them, they prefer to put some money and buy one t-shirt, one quality t-shirt in good cotton, and not to spend, I don't know, uh, $5 for 10 t-shirts of low, low, low cost chains. This is very important, maybe because, because the luxury things can be like a treasure, can be, uh, w when I was young, uh, my mother has three Hermes bags, and I have two older sisters, and when my mother died, uh, my sister going on, they are going on to use Hermes bag. And they are perfect because they are well done. So what's the matter? The matter is about quality, is about desire, and I think is about the circulation of ideas. Because now uh, we say, okay, Always the Termezza, you see, it's beautiful shoes, crocodile, good materials, they sell it with the set for cleaning. At, uh, I was telling that maybe the, the, the youngest, the, the young client could appreciate it. Because I think that uh, uh, when, we w when, when we went to see the last Paris show, and um, it was the farewell of Marc Jacobs uh, to Louis Vuitton, we found a note in which they detailed every kind of handmade details we had in the well, we had in the clothes, we had in the shoes. Uh, they were very, they, they, they wanted to inform us about the quality, about the craftsmanship behind them. And uh, uh, I think that this is a good thing for you because uh, this is, a, okay, let's face it, uh, it is a marketing strategy. Uh, but at the same time, it reminds us the dimension of what we call atelier. Uh, atelier, it's a small place where the, the, the ladies uh, went, to, went to make some dresses made just for them. It was like, it was haute couture. In Italian, is alta moda. 
And I think that this kind of dimension is very diffuse on this district. And I think you, that you, I'm, I'm sure of that, uh, I think that you can use this kind of uh, a structure, this kind of infrastructure to define, to distribute your products. Even because when we, when we speak about very wealthy consumers, uh, they don't want anymore something that is, uh, e there is no difference. They want something that is uh, almost the design just for them. Uh, this is the reason why Zenia, Gucci, Prada, Fendi uh, are doing a made-to-measure, a made-to-measure department, especially for men's wear, but for women's wear too. Uh, one week ago, I was in Sicily following the advertising campaign of uh, Mr. Dolce Gabbana. Uh, I'm a very close friend to them, and uh, when I asked them, are you going to make always Sicily, 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 Sicily? We are fed up with Sicily. And they told me they were so clear with me. They said, yes, because we are Italians, we are proud to be Italians. Our heritage is Italian, and it's not Italian, but it's, it's Sicilian. Sicily is, is in the south of Italy, it's a specific character. So we will go on on this DNA, on this heritage because we belong to this country and we want to make that like a statement. So I hope that it's possible for the Arabic people to distribute, to define this, uh, your, your kind of culture because I'm very interested in knowledge and I'm very interested into different cultures from, from di cultures that are different from mine. Especially about what's and crafted, because this is the real richness of today. At the same time, we have to face with a so connected world that it's so easy. Yesterday it was a very um, an interesting, uh, interesting talk about uh, selling, about buyers, and uh, one person said that the last buyers are the customers. And I'm, I'm absolutely convinced. My friend said that, <laughs> Zen, said that the last buyers were the, the definitely the last, the, 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 the consumers are the last buyers. And I think that now we have uh, to face a very uh, self-conscious consumer. And this, in, this in this process, we can use all the technology devices because the te technology devices can be an, uh, can do an alliance, can do a good mix. Uh, and um, I'm sorry, but maybe from little realities could be a very good thing. Uh, I, don't, I don't consider a bad thing the e-commerce because e-commerce could reach some more person with real things. Uh, with original things than a shop, that a single shop placed in, uh, geographically in one place. Can we see the last folder, please? And I want to leave you with uh, a, a case history very interesting because uh, this, is a, uh, this is a much more complicated history. It's about Brunello Cucinelli. I don't know if you know him. Brunello Cucinelli makes the best Kashmir in Italy and I think in Europe. So uh, someone can ask me, okay, Kashmir doesn't come from Italy. No, but the way of working it is completely done in Italy. And he decided to make an advertising like that. It was desert, I think it's Mongolia. This is the advertising, the campaign. This is in Sicily, this is Taormina. This is in another region of Italy called Puglia. This is always Sicily. And that's very important. This is the last one. This is the last one. Brunello decided to make something so personalized, so customized that this is his father, this is his mother, and she was 
the teacher when he was a baby. So he realized that something very familiar, something very warm about a product that costs a lot of money, but it's so well done that we can say other, we can say the other folder. The, the, the product is so high, of, of high quality, then he decided to buy a whole village in that beautiful, in that beautiful region called Umbria. This is Brunello Cucinelli. And he, he bought a small village, a small village in which he has his own factory. And at the same time, he decided to, to transform this small village in a, in a pole of culture. Of the, this is the theater, and it's make, uh, is made like the Renaissance theater and something of uh, ancient Greek theater. This is, and th the name of this village is Solomeo. And Solomeo, this is the factories, and there are the houses of the workers, and there is uh, no restaurant, but the mothers of the workers make the food for the worker. So it's like a community in which all of them were for the Kashmir, but at the same time, uh, she deci he decided to open a school just for the very technician worker, and in, the, in the, the morning, they study about, I don't know, about how to work on a loom or uh, just to sew some cashmere, some cashmere sweater. At in the afternoon, they study arts, they study ballet, uh, they study history, because this is our heritage. And uh, I think that in reality, we are, I, uh, the title of, of, my, of my talk was global setter, but in reality I had to entitle that global. You know this kind of word is global and local because now we, we have to face this new reality. Global because we have to sell, we have to communicate with, with the world, but at the same time people want something that has the, the smell, that has the feelings of something produced locally, regionally. And that's, I think, it's a good receipt for you, uh, because if I come here in Dubai, I don't want to find another big brand bag. I'd like to find something that's it's made here with your culture, with your craftsmanship, with your competence, because I'm sure that, like my friend Rosanne said yesterday, uh, there is no more supremacy of Western fashion and the other and the other fashion of the world because we are we we can speak on the same level. Okay, it's a high level because it's a quality level. It's the maximum. It's the top of the quality, but at the same time we have to speak on that on that level altogether because what we make us rich and rich and more rich. Now there are ideas, and the ideas comes from everywhere, not just from Italy or from Europe. Thank you. <laughs> Is there any question? Do you think that maybe the Made in Italy can be a bit um, more... I feel like in Italy there's amazing styling. Yes. And the 15 years ago Milano, the, the hub of the, the, that everyone must be in and part of, is slightly, it's not as bright as it used to be a long time ago. And I feel like Italians will always be, have the best craftsmanship, the best um, style but not necessarily the best ideas anymore. Well, I underst understand your question. So, sorry. I understand your, questions, uh, and, uh, your question, and I can almost agree with you. Because uh, usually, when I was young, it was, uh, there were three capitals of fashion in the world. It was New Year for the sportswear or easy wear, Paris for the fashion, and Italy for clothing. 
So I think, because uh, I'm sorry, but we sell much more than friends. Uh, <laughs> The double or, or three times more, I don't know, but uh, thanks, thanks God, is, uh, we are selling, we're selling a lot, we're still selling a lot. So I can agree with you that from your point of view, you can see like a lack of creativity in Italy. But it, uh, I don't think it's so true because there are new names that uh, they are upcoming designer, like, I don't know, Aquilano Rimondi and uh, Stella Jeanne is uh, very good. And at the same time, uh, lots of Italian designer are, uh, went to Paris. Uh, my friend Riccardo Tisci designs uh, Givenchy. Uh, my friend Alessandro Dell'Acqua, who attended the Damus Academy, uh, now is in chief at Rochas. Uh, and Marco Zanini uh, will do Schiaparelli, and Schiaparelli is owned by Diego della Valle, who's Italian. So we live in a very global world, and I, don't, I can understand your point of view, but at the same time, I think we observe to watch this kind of, uh, of, of world as a very mobile world in which ideas come and go. So, okay, fashion is business, and business is still okay in Italy, and maybe you find some more, some more new things, new fresh ideas in France. But I don't know, uh, for my opinion, from my, in my personal opinion, if I want to see really new and uh, really new and really fresh, I go to London. Oh, uh, I went last year to the Sao Paulo Fashion Week in Brazil, because, uh, and I was to Lagos in Nigeria Fashion Week. So, uh, sincerely, in my opinion, as a person, as a friend, maybe Europe is always okay, it's beautiful, it's fantastic, but uh, we have to open our doors to, to the foreign designers. And that's a fault, yes, this is a fault of the, the, the fashion Italian system, they are very close to the new name, uh, pe um, people from abroad. But uh, I insist, uh, Italian manufacturing is so important, then I can understand that there is no wow things, but we sell a lot and maybe our duty is uh, to make work lots of people. Uh, and so, but I think that now something is changing and uh, there are lots of new up and coming designers in Italy and I hope you will come back in Milano to find something really new and you will say, wow. No, I'm sorry for my argument wasn't against the Italian um, fashion sense or uh, trend. It was out of my, Italy was my Mecca for the longest time and um, I felt recently that big brands are doing so well while the younger generations may be going somewhere else to, yes. get, to be recognized out of Italy. And that's a pity because I think the Camera de Moda or... Uh, oh, no. Whatever. I mean, <laughs> the, the, not, the governmental no. responsibility <laughs> that used to be... I mean, Italians are so famous for a lot of things. And no, this, um, some of those elements are kindly dying slowly due to the global change anyway. But I think maybe there should be, just like any government in the world or country, highlighting the talents and adopting them and nurturing them should be, a, I think, a lifestyle in Italy yeah, as much right. as quality and, uh, and... We, and as we, I intend, all the j Italian journalists, fashion journalists, we are doing like a campaign, writing letter to the Camera Nazionale della Moda, say, why don't you organize something for the young designer? And I don't know if you know that uh, Mr. Giorgio Armani, in person, decided, decided to borrow his beautiful theater to the young Italian designer. The first was Andrea Pompilio, and the second was Stella Jeanne. So, uh, but this is a private decision of Mr. Giorgio Armani. It's not a statement of Camera Nazionale della Moda, but I think that with us, with our effort, uh, so let's try to, to see something new and let, let give, let's give to the new names to have a window, to have a catwalk uh, from all over the world, not only Italians, and we are trying to do that, I can assure that. What are you seeing and what are you excited about in this region? I was excited by the craftsmanship equi. I was excited yesterday. Yeah, I arrived yesterday, but I saw some very interesting shows. 
especially for the craftsmanship, for the embroideries, so for the handmade side. And I think that uh, uh, new generation of designers, uh, they have to use them. They have to use like these antique tools because they have, uh, uh, it's, now it's possible to make a link between the old tradition and the new technologies. Uh, do you speak Italian? No. no. Uh, but uh, I invite you to see on YouTube this beautiful short movie called La Tela e il Ciliegio, but it's almost mute, there's no word, <laughs> so you, you can understand it. Uh, it's called, uh, in, Ita in, in English, is The Canvas and the Cherry Blossom. And it, this is a beautiful documentary about a conversation, it's not a conversation, it's a mute conversation about a hood worker, an artisan of, of hood of 91 years old, and, and technology, coach technology of 19 years old. And there are no words, but it's so interesting because they can, re they, they can speak without words because all of them, uh, uh, both of them are artisans, are craftsmanship. One works with the hood, with the, the, the material, one works with the bit or something not material, but the process, the creative, the creative process to work with hands, it's the, the language which reunites uh, together. So uh, yesterday I saw very nice handmade details, and I think they have to go on on this. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for your passion. And about, uh, and about your culture too, because you, uh, the, the culture here is so rich. Uh, that could be a good competitor with uh, Italian and European one. As we say in Italy, buon appetito. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for an invitation. <laughs>